you were doing this in class, what would you like their advice on? Now, recording software, and this is where I'm about to jump out of the slides because I think you can read these yourselves. Those are the instructions, and it might be more instructive to try doing one. Um, now, recording software. Let's pop across to the dot cam so I can show you what's going on here. Let's move the stuff from previous classes, whoever they were, off. And I'm going to suggest that actually very often this is a very good piece of recording software. Never underestimate the power of pointing your mobile phone at something. And the way I've set accessory up is actually partly based off the fact that a lot of people are going to do this. So let's try, and this could go very, very badly wrong, and do one here and now. Um, so, let's put this down there so that it can be seen on the video as well as the video that I'm about to try to take on my phone. And we're recording. Okay, so for this sample video, I'm going to suggest uh, building the Weasley clock. So I don't know if you've read the Harry Potter books, but in some of the later books, Mrs. Weasley has a special clock that doesn't have the time on it. Pardon me. Uh, instead, it has things like work and traveling and home and social life and mortal peril. And it has a hand for each member of the family. And the, the hands move around magically depending upon where someone is. So if dad went from work and suddenly was traveling and got home. And there's a part in one of the books where suddenly Voldemort is on the loose again and everyone's hands all go around to mortal peril for the rest of the se uh, series. I thought it might be quite fun to build the Weasley Clock app. So with the idea that everyone in a family would install this on their phone and it would send their location back to some um, central service so they can all see where each other are, uh, is. And they can set up what these locations are going to be, you know, where work is, where traveling is, where home is, where social life, maybe that's the shops or the cinema or something like that, and use the location sensors of the phone to uh, work out where everyone is. And I thought, although these are configurable, it would be quite nice to include the Mortal Peril one, because this is the Harry Potter uh, we Weasley clock. And so we, we, we could set that up so you can configure what Mortal Peril is. Maybe Mortal Peril is the ice cream parlor or something that you, you can't resist but know that you should. Uh, or maybe it's that, uh, that, 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 that work meeting that you really, really don't like and want, want to get away from. Um, OK, so to do this, I'm going to need to investigate families. And I'm going to need to investigate families that are interested in knowing where each other is and has uh, a mobile phone and uh, is, if you like, willing to do this. And uh, so this is probably going to be parents with a couple of teenage kids or something because, you know, very young children tend to, tend to uh, go around with their parents and we, we want enough people for it to be useful uh, for the mums, uh, mums and dads. Um, now that's about as far as I've got the concept at the moment and one of the things I'm a bit worried about is that it might be too complicated to set all of this stuff up. I mean, if you've got to set up where work is, where travelling is, where home is before you can start using it, are people gonna, going to get bored? So I'd, I'd, I'd like some advice on how you think we should go about making this really engaging really quickly. All right, now according to this, that's 2 minutes 38 seconds, and I accidentally bumped a few phone buttons and zoomed in. But reason for doing this on the phone, how do we get this video up there? We have a couple of options. Now, I said that accessory was partly designed with the idea that a lot of people are going to record these things on their phone. Most people, on their phone, you tap that button, and you scroll down a bit. Actually, in fact, there it is, right at the top. There is a YouTube button right there. Phone videos can get big really quickly, especially if you've got an iPhone with a high-definition camera. But um, almost everybody has uh, a share to YouTube button on their phone. And so let's give this a title. Uh, concept video example 
and description. Privacy, I can have it as unlisted because I'm going to post the link uh, somewhere that the rest of the class can see it. I can't set it private, though, because otherwise the people who are asked to critique it won't be able to. Now I'm going to hit upload. And so that should now be off winging its way uh, to about 62, 50, 45 seconds remaining. Can we zoom in a little bit? There it is, making its way off to Mr. Google. Um, and so the nice thing about that is I haven't had to worry about how am I going to shrink this video down to size. Now, if you don't want to record it on your phone, it may well be that you want to do some screen recording. Um, and so you could do the same sort of thing. And so let's just exit out of this. If you happen to have a Mac, they're really nice and they build this in. Quick time player. New screen recording. I'm not going to record the whole thing again, um, but I can just say click to record the full screen or drag to record part of it, and let's start recording, and I talk over the top of it, and imagine that I was doing one of these properly, and after a while I feel as though I've recorded the thing, and I press stop, and I've now got a video um, sitting there that I can save. And again, it might be too big, but once again, if I go, um, let's save that, and let's just save it as test video on my desktop. But so I can go and I can upload that to YouTube, and very often there are, in fact, uh, exports. Uh, Okay, this one at the moment, never mind. I'm forgetting which app it is, but, uh, but a lot of them will upload it to YouTube automatically. You can just go to youtube.com, drag it up there. Uh, you might want to find a way of shrinking the video down to size if you don't want your app uh, upload to take ages and if your video has, has taken a long time. Um, there is a site called clipchamp dot com that can actually shrink your, um, it can use your browser to reduce the size of uh, the video. So that is actually video compression done in JavaScript. Uh, and so if you haven't got software on there already, you can kind of just go in and try it out and upload it that way. Now, suppose you don't want to sign Mr. Google's license agreement for YouTube. You're not happy on their terms of service. Um, it turns out UNE now has a... If I go to Moodle Home, My Media, and this will take a little bit of a moment, I can go and upload uh, media from my computer to, if you like, UNE's own video cloud. Uh, it's not quite as convenient as YouTube because my phone doesn't have Share to Kaltura already built into it. Um, but so there is a cloud that is a UNE cloud if you are a little bit concerned about uploading things to YouTube, and you can do that. Um, the other thing that's not quite so nice about it, in a moment, we're going to need to go and paste the link in. Um, the way you do that for Kaltura is you actually have to, from this link, go right-click, copy link address. Um, because if you click on the video itself after you've uploaded it and you click share, unfortunately it will only give you the embed iframe tag, which isn't what we want. We want the URL, not the iframe tag. Uh, now let's see if in the time that I've been wittering on, YouTube has uh, neatly uploaded my video. Concept video example. Now they are still processing it. But I can grab the URL of that video. So I've uploaded it to the cloud, but I haven't actually told anyone where it is. And somehow I've got to tell the class where it is. And particularly, I've got to sell my system accessory where it is. So if we go into COSC uh, 370 in Moodle now, and we have a look in assessment items. Let's turn editing off so it's more like a student. If I go into assessments, 
There are now some little links underneath the product concept video task. If I click that one, it will, oops, sorry, I right clicked as well. Uh, it will automatically log me in to accessory and take me to the task where I go and paste uh, my video URL. And you'll know if you've got it right because it will replace it with a YouTube player or with a Kaltura player. Um, once I've done that, I can save that, and it'll, it'll just save it, and I can go away and I can do other, other, other stuff with it. There is a little yes, no box asking, mm, do you mind if we use your responses in this for a little bit of research, investigating how students go with, um, uh, with uh, this kind of video critique uh, task? Um, please understand that you are in no way obligated to tick yes on that, and ticking no or not ticking at all will in, in no way affect your grade in the unit whatsoever. Uh, we are asking for your permission to use um, uh, your, your data for research, but that does not mean that you have to give it to us. Um, however, the next thing that I'm going to need to do, and I'm not going to do this because otherwise my video is going to turn up for one of you to critique, um, if I want to make my video available for other people to critique it, which you'll need to do, you're going to need to tick, click that finalize button. It doesn't stop you editing the task, but it says, all right, you can now schedule this for someone to critique it. Later on, when the, we, once people have uploaded their concept videos, there is a second task in here, watch and critique concept videos. And if you click into that one, uh, this one is not open yet, but that will allocate you three other people's videos to watch. And it'll show you the player there, and you can just press play. I watch them. And to start with, it's going to ask you to provide some advice in text. When we get onto the prototype stage, I'm actually going to ask you to provide some advice back as a video. Um, because, for instance, very often people want to show alternative designs, sketches, things like that, and you can't show that in a text box. Um, so does that explain that part of the process in terms of posting your concepts and critiquing other people's? Um, the third one that you'll see down here, uh, ooh, and I need to rename that. Many apologies. I haven't changed the title of that. Uh, if When I copied it across, if you click on it, you'll see it's actually review your concept uh, video critiques. Uh, so after people have had a chance to watch your your video and to give you some advice, you can then click in, into that one and you can see their advice. And there's a few questions that we're asking you about it. Did you find it to be helpful, actionable, specific, constructive? What did you find useful about it? Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because